Welcome to my channel. This video is about Indian Lebanon tree, which is also known as golden shower, parsing fistula, pudding pipe tree, etc. Latin name is Cassia fistula. It is called by different names in India, such as Amaltas in Hindi, Sunaru in Assamese, Koke in Kannada, Kannai in Malayalam, and so on. It is a middle-sized deciduous tree growing to 8 to 12 meter tall. This tree is much more than just an ornamental tree. So I will cover all the important aspects on this tree in this video. It is the state flower Kerala where its flowers are used as offerings in Vishnu festival. It is the national flower and tree of Thailand. It is indigenous to India, Burma, Sri Lanka and other regions of Southeast Asia. Also, it has naturalized in other countries. It is cultivated for its aesthetic beauty along roadside in gardens, temples and other public spaces. During its flowering period from April to July, it looks spectacular with spoon-shaped bright yellow flowers on long pendulous racemes which resemble like hanging chandelier. Pollution is by bees and butterflies. Amaltas is highly tolerant to air pollution and so an ideal tree for planting in cities along roadsides, green space like traffic circles national highway and near pollution prone industrial areas. Omolta tree produces one to two feet long cylindrical pipe shaped pods which are initially green turn black at maturity during March April. Each pod contains 40 to 100 brown oval seeds encased in dark colored sweetish pulp separated by one another by transverse septa. The pulp is sticky and hence it cements the seeds impeding their removal. The ripe pods do not split open and release the seeds even after falling on the ground. As such, natural reproduction of this tree is little difficult. Robert Scott Troop, a British forestry expert who belonged to Imperial Forestry Service during British colonial period made an interesting experiment in Dehradun. He collected ripe pots, placed them on a marked plot. Within a week, jackals came and cracked open the pots to eat the sweet pulp, scattered the seeds around the plot. He observed germination of seeds in the first season in July in this plot. Some seeds germinated in second year as well as in third year also due to dormancy. He made another plot alongside the first one at the same time and placed some ripe omaltas fruits. But this plot was covered with strong case of wire nets to prevent the animals to enter inside. In this plot, even after four seasons, that means four years, no seed germination took place. Seeds never escaped from the pots, but some seeds remained sound. After many other subsequent observations in the forest, troop finally concluded that animals such as jackals, monkeys, bears, pigs, etc., which eat the pulp, of the pots were useful agents to scatter the seeds for natural regeneration. The germination of seeds is probably accelerated in case of seeds which are swallowed and passed through the digestive tract. Much of its natural reproduction in forests takes place through root suckers. Now let me discuss about its propagation and cultivation. Amaltas requires 
warm climate and moderate light. It does not make great demand for particular soil. It can be grown in well-drained, sandy, loamy and clayey soils. It can also grow in shallow soils. It is highly drought resistant but susceptible to frost. It is not browsed by cattle, not even by goat. It can be propagated by seeds through air layering and semi-wood cuttings. Ripe pots are collected from the trees in March-April. Seeds are separated from pulp, washed with cold water and dried. The seeds can be stored in gunny bags in a cool, dry place for many years without much loss of viability. However, seeds stored for one year germinate more quickly than the pressed seeds. Before sowing, to improve germination, seeds are soaked in warm water for 24 hours. Germination also can be improved by scarifying the seeds by treating the seeds in concentrated sulfuric acid for 45 minutes or by treating the seeds with 760 ppm zebradic acid. We may get 40 to 70 percent seed germination depending on seed treatment method and quality of seeds. The seeds germinate in 6 to 52 days. Pre-treated seeds are sown in seed bed and covered with straw mulch. Small seedlings are pricked and transplanted in container bags. Otherwise, you can dibble two to three seeds directly in the poly bags filled with soil mixtures. For tall seedlings, preferably 10 inch by 16 inch size bags should be used. The plants grow slowly, so it takes about one year to attain plantable size. The seedlings can be planted in 75 centimeter cubic feet at 5 meter apart. During initial years, regular watering is needed for establishment of roots. Mulching at the base is beneficial. Weeding is most essential as this plant cannot compete with weeds. In young stage, trimming of branches is required for getting uniform crown shape. Normally, from seedlings it will take 8 to 10 years for plowing, but the period can be reduced if propagated by vegetative methods. A hybrid called Cassia cross nili, commonly known as rainbow sour tree, is available. This hybrid is a cross between Cassia fistula and Cassia javanica, and it produces flowers with different sets of colors like light pink, light yellow, or even white. It does not produce pots and bloom for longer period with abundant flowers. Lastly, let me talk about its uses. Amoltas offer multiple health benefits. Every part of this wonderful plant has therapeutic and curative values due to presence of bioactive compounds like glycosides, anthraquinones, flavonoids, terpenoids, etc. Ayurveda proclaims Amoltas as Sarva Ruga Prasamani, which cures all types of disease and offers immunity against many microbial infections. In Ayurvedic medicine, it is also called Arakbadha, meaning disease killer. So, its different parts, especially the fruit pulp, is used in preparation of Ayurvedic formulations to treat various diseases like skin disease, intestinal worms, cough, cold, leukoderma, and also to treat wounds. Each fruit pulp paste in warm water is consumed to treat constipation and also to treat rheumatoid arthritis. Its fruit pulp paste with sesame oil is applied near navel for stomach pain due to flatulence. 
Its bark is also used to treat inflammatory swelling, ulcers and wound. Its root is also used in constipation, fever and gas formation. A paste from root is also used to cure leprosy. Cold decoction of its bark is used to gargle for treating mouth and throat related problem. Amaltus leaf paste with goat milk or coconut oil is applied to the afflicted part to cure skin allergy. Leaf paste is also applied on hands and feet in case of paralysis and for treating scabies. A paste of flowers is used as an ointment for pimples. It is always better to consult Ayurvedic practitioners to avoid side effects while using different parts of this tree as medicine. Regarding other uses, its brick red hardwood is hard and durable. Used for house post, breeze post, rice pounders, agriculture implements, tool handles, etc. Its bark is also used for tanning and as ingredient in beetle paste. The seeds are potential source for seed gums as binder for pharmaceutical industries. Even perfume is prepared from its flowers. Thus, Amaltas tree has myriad uses. Let us grow this valuable tree. Thank you.